We'll start with the stroke study. The inclusion criteria was patient who had stroke six to 36 months prior to initiating the treatment, and all patient has to be stable from the neurological evaluation. If they are still getting better, uh, we didn't include them. 74 patient, 37, 37, uh, the treatment group, SPECT, neuro neurological evaluation again, and the cross group, after being in a control period and repeating the evaluation, had hyperbaric oxygen and then a third evaluation. The baseline were the same in both group, and before I will move forward, this is the way I like to present the data. Each circle will present the patient. This is the baseline NIHSS score, the neurological evaluation score. This is the post-hyperbaric therapy score. If the patient is improving, then he's moving to this side. So you can see all the patient in one, in one gland. Here we see the treatment group, NIHSS score and activity of daily living. Whether this change that we see in the neurological evaluation has a significant effect on their ability to perform the daily activity. We can see that in the treatment group there was improvement that affect also their daily activity. This is the control group during the control period. And after that, this control group is getting the treatment. And then we can see the improvement. Again, control, getting the treatment, and we see the improvement. This is a kind of analysis where we take the treatment, both group after treatment, and see the change. And you can see that both group have the same response to the hyperbaric therapy. And this is the control group over there during the control period where we see there, there is no change. I will explain what we think happened over an example of a patient. This is a patient from the control group, 61-year-old woman, suffering from left hemiparesis due to ischemic score that was one year prior to the, it, she's inclusion in the study. These are the baseline, SPECT, and this is the scale of the activity in the brain, okay? The upper, the activity is better. This is the baseline, this is the basal ganglia. After a control period, we see that there is no significant change, and then this patient is given therapy, hyperbaric therapy. And you can see that this area that is responsible for the hand, the hand starts to move. The hand is moving, and we can see the metabolic activity in this area. Look at the basal ganglia, what's happening. Another example, 62-year-old woman suffering from right hemiparesis and aphasia. She wasn't able to speak due to ischemic score that occurs 14 months before her inclusion in the study, okay? This is the motor function area, and this is the broca. From here we are speaking, okay? Baseline, after hyperbaric therapy. The hand is moving, and she starts to speak. And it goes simultaneously. Here we can see in the city the necrotic area. This is a necrotic area of the brain. The necrotic area doesn't change. It stays the same. But the surrounding area, the hibernation, the penumbra, we can see the change. We can see that it's being light up and activated again. Meaning, the effect of the hyperbaric therapy is at location where we see a mismatch between the metabolic and the anatomical function of the brain. We need to have a tissue, okay? If we don't have a tissue in this area, if it's a necrotic area, the hyperbaric will not help in this territory. TBI, the pathogenesis of TBI, we just heard about it. What's unique in TBI is that we don't see one location. We have a turnover of the brain from one side to the other. It's been hard by the, by the skull, and we see different location of damage on different degrees. That's why the most prominent clinical finding is neurocognitive malfunction. Here we took patient one to six years after the acute event. Again, why is that? Because we didn't want the control group to improve, okay? We don't have the money to do uh, such a large-scale uh, study. Uh, 90 patients were screened, 
and 56 patients were included. We took patients with mild TBI. Why mild TBI? Because usually the CT scan or the anatomical evaluation of the brain looks normal. Okay, looks normal, it does not normal, but we don't see it. We are doing SPECT scan evaluation for this patient, and then we see the malfunctioning of the brain. The neurocognitive function, this is something fresh from last week, the analysis, we have just finished the analysis. We will focus on memory, attention, executive function, and information processing speed. These are the neurocognitive functions that usually get damaged with, after TBI. We use the mainstream computerized uh, analysis uh, evaluation. Let's look what's going on over here. Attention evaluation, okay? Both group, the, con the study group and the crossover group before and after hyperbaric therapy, we see the improvement. This is the control group, the crossover group. The baseline, no change during the control period. And after getting the therapy, we can see the increase. Again, it's going together. There is no significant change over here. Memory evaluation. Given hyperbaric, it increased during the control, control period, no significant increase. Again, the effect of hyperbaric is the same in both groups. It, more than one year after the acute event, no other intervention was done during that period. Information processing speed, the same. The increase is after the HBOT, and executive function, also the same. And if we want to understand what happened over here, we can look at the SPECT scan and see again. These are, since it's TBI, we see different areas of the brain. This patient is two years after the acute event, after the TBI. And we can see the area that are non-functioning, non-functioning area, look over here, and they are getting the function again. Again, non-functioning area, improved after therapy, and these are of the same patient, the neurocognitive evaluation that is being improved. What we can say from this data is that hyperbaric air therapy can lead to a significant neuroplasticity and neurological evaluation in patients suffering from chronic neurological deficiency, either after traumatic brain injury or after stroke, and the effect is in the location where we have a metabolic dysfunction. This is the group that working today on the project, and I hope that others will join us because there is a lot now to learn, and that's it for now. Thank you, Shai. We have a few minutes for questions. Go ahead, Danny. Danny. So until Danny go to the microphone, one question. Do you have a long uh, follow-up to no, see no, if yeah, you, maybe... Yeah, that's what my question. <laughs> How long does it last? Uh, we don't have yet the long follow-up. We have just finished the study yet. Okay, so we have to wait and see. The general impression, the general impression that after this change is made, is holding in the TBI or the stroke. Okay, but we have to wait and see. We have to wait and see. Would you recommend normal baric oxygen at the acute phase of a traumatic brain injury in the ambulance? There is, there was published a beautiful article, an opinion article that I recommend you all to read in Nature. It's called the New Penumbra, okay? We know what the sequence of events that happen in animal model, like you presented, but we have no clue what's going on in human brains. So when in the, you can know in animal that, in the timeline that you saw, when it happens, but the brains that we have, the cortex that we have, it's completely different than rats or mice or this kind of animal. We are not mice, we are not rats. Okay, I can put a rat near me. Maybe the face will look the same, but the size is different, okay? And the way of thinking is different, okay? We are not rats. And we are especially not rats when we are speaking about the brain, okay? So we know that there is a transformation, but we don't know when it happened. As a physician, you can feel it. 
you can feel when the transformation is being made in a specific patient. It's usually at the time when it goes, when he goes to rehabilitation program. But it's hard to define it. You cannot define it from ahead. So I don't know what is the optimal time. I don't know if normobaric will help. Normobaric is increasing the tissue oxygenation. It's just a dose effect. I don't know that yet. Very interesting talk. Uh, thank you. Uh, so from your talk, uh, can you, is it safe to say that the best correlate for a TBI outcome is brain metabolism, a brain scan looking at, uh, I know there's some evidence, there's been some argument that the best outcome, you know, is brain metabolism, kind of what you're, you're talking about. And, and if that's the case, uh, so a metabolic therapy then would be, uh, would be the best strategy to restore brain metabolism to, uh, to then prevent the, down the downstream cascade of events that then lead to TBI and maybe PTSD. So oxygen is one way to do that. And I was wondering, you know, if you have a, a, a soldier with TBI and you put him in a, in a hyperbaric chamber, he, he could run the risk for a seizure. And then that could be, but you're, you're talking about restoring brain metabolism at a later time point to prevent the excess reactive oxygen species. But maybe if you deliver a metabolic substrate, uh, the quicker you can restore brain metabolism, the faster you can, uh, you know, the better the outcome. So we know that the brain uses glucose under normal conditions, but in a, in a condition uh, during starvation or during the ketogenic diet, so the brain can have a metabolic switch to an alternative fuel source, which is ketone bodies. And ketones have a higher kind of delta G of ATP hydrolysis, they, rain, they, they have a higher capacity to generate energy than glucose even, and they reduce ROS levels and they reduce neuroinflammation. So maybe a, a metabolic therapy combined with hyperbaric oxygen could be an ideal strategy, is a thought I had. It's a good thought, but I want, with your permission, to speak some philosophy. Okay, I have yeah, we've got time. We've got uh, three, four minutes. Oh, four minutes, okay. Yeah. But you have more questions. The, uh, I have, you have more, some questions. more questions. Okay. So. The body, the ability of the body to do things, rehabilitation process, is amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Think about it. The body can generate reactive, not, can do angiogenesis, okay? Can generate new blood vessels. Where, we de where do we see that? It's how to look at the brain. But what we are doing now with diabetic foot, okay? With diabetic foot, we are taking the injury location. We are measuring TCPO2. We are measuring the oxygen in the ulcer itself, okay? If the tissue oxygenation is below 35 or 40, you know that it doesn't matter what you will do. It doesn't matter what you will do. You will lose the leg because you don't have the energy needed for the healing process. Same happen over here, okay? If you are alive and you are awake, on your, on your awakeness, you are wasting the 10% that can be functional, meaning you have nothing left for the injured. You, you have no reserve for healing processes. In order to give the reserve, you need more oxygen. And that's what we are doing per se now. What you are saying is completely true. Once we are giving the energy for the healing processes, you should add substrate that will make it easier. And ketones are yeah. very good idea for that. So the substrate itself, the ketones that I'm talking about, increase brain blood flow 40%. It's, so in addition to, you know... It's not only that they, they increase the, the blood flow, you increase... The oxygen. You have a substrate together with the glucose. It can be the ketone can be used by the brain instead of glucose. You are increasing also that to the brain. Okay, you are increasing the energy. For example, some of the patients that don't have good response with related to the hyperbaric had either B12, vitamin B12 that was at the lower level, vitamin D that was at the lower level, folic acid that was at the lower level. It's not that they had deficiency, but it was at the lower level. And when you're giving the oxygen, you don't have the building consumers that you need. 
So what we are doing now, all patients are being evaluated for the different substrate and we want them high before we are increasing the oxygen. Mm. Okay, but this is very, this is true. You need to give it all. Give the body the ability to build itself. You know, we are here in Israel. You heard about the Western Wall in Israel? Okay. So there is a story about a good Jewish guy that go to the Western Wall and you know that if you put a note in the Western Wall and you pray, then you get your wish. Okay, you should all go there. If you are all from outside, so you should all go there. A small note, okay? Not here on the Dead Sea, okay? But in the Western Wall. So there is a Jewish guy, very good Jewish guy, that go to the Western Wall on a daily basis. On a daily basis, and in asking God every day, I want to win the pies. How do you say it in English? The lottery. I want to win the lottery. And he's going on a daily basis, on a daily basis, asking God. So the man is now 75, and God asks the angel Gabriel, give him the chance. Look at him. He's very dedicated. He's coming every day to the Western world. Say, I want to give him, but he needs to buy a ticket. <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. Same with the body. It can do amazing things. Yeah. You just have to buy the ticket. You just need to give the energy. So, and I think okay? 